This is a video about finding simple effects, but before I show you that trick, I'm going to have to show you how to run a regular factorial ANOVA in SPSS. So our example here is anxiety. You know, does a person's anxiety, is it affected by the different types of therapy or the different types of medication? That's what we're going to check for. So the DV is anxiety. Everybody in the study is being measured for anxiety. That makes it the DV. And then the first IV is the therapy types, and there are three of them. That's where the three comes in up here from the 3 by 2 factorial. The second IV is the different medications. So that's where the two comes in. So remember, the IVs are always categorical variables for an ANOVA, and the DVs are always continuous variable scores, right? So the higher the number, the higher the anxiety. So let's take a look at this. So the three therapy types are CBT, biofeedback, and DBT. These are called levels, by the way. And our second IV is the medications. And we're dealing with Xanax and Ativan. So let's go ahead and get some working room here. And let me put the scores in. The DV is anxiety. So what I'm putting in the little cells here will be the their, each individual's anxiety scores. And there they all are. So you can see some, some's a little high, some's a little low. So remember, the higher the, uh, the higher the number, the more the anxiety. So now let's switch over to SPSS. So hold on. Okay. Factorial ANOVA. We're going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. And our DV is Anxiety Scores. Scooch just over. And our therapy type is a fixed factor. So remember, fixed factor at this stage means categorical variable. And medication. One, two, three. So let's go to Options. Homogeneity and Tests. Descriptives, effect size, and power, power, power. And let's just leave it at that. I'm not going to do any post hoc tests, etc., etc., because this is a video about simple effects. So that should be okay. Am I missing something? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, we want plots. Therapy is horizontal, medication is separate. We're going to add them. Now, remember, these are the plots of the marginal means, and if they cross or they look like they're going to cross, that usually means there's interaction, significant interaction going on. So let's. Take a peek at that and click OK. Here is the output. So that's how many we have in each group. And here are the means. And I can already see right off the bat, right? So uh, CBT people with Xanax, they're way low at 6.25. And I got DBT with Ativan, they're way high at 12.5. So there's going to be a significant difference in there, don't act surprised. So the assumption of homogeneity variance, where the variances should be relatively the same, was not violated, right? Because it's 0.998. And here is our money box. So this is our source of variance box. So the overall corrected model, the first row, is significant. So that means somewhere, yes, between these six groups, there is going to be a significant difference. It doesn't tell you where. But this is what we call an omnibus F. It's your first significant F. So somewhere between those six groups, there's a significant difference in anxiety scores. So we never look at the intercepts. Well, we do, but not in this not in this video. So first variable, IV is the therapy type. There was a significant difference in anxiety scores based on therapy type because this is less than 0 0.05. So in other words, another way to say that is there was a main effect of therapy type. Say that again. There was a main effect of therapy type. That just means there was a significant difference in whatever the DV was between the three levels of the therapy type. Number two, medication. Uh-oh, there was no significant difference in anxiety scores for the medication. And so we can say there was no main effect for medication because that number is not less than 0.05. And the last one, is the interaction term. That's the one we're checking for. That little asterisk tells us that this is the interaction term, and it was significant. Okay, so there was a significant interaction going on between 
one, at least one of the therapy types and one of the medication types. So we're going to do some further investigation. But let's look at the um, marginal means plot, and it crosses all over the place. So that means there is some kind of interaction. So now let me show you how to go about getting a simple effect. Okie dokie, schmoky. So main effects again. So there was a main effect of therapy. In other words, there was a significant difference in, in the DV scores, the anxiety scores, between the three types of therapy. But there was no main effect between the medications. So in other words, there was no significant anxiety difference in the anxiety scores between the two different medicines. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at what we call the simple effects. A simple effect, by definition, is where you hold the data at one level of one IV, but you run it across all the other levels of the other IV. It's kind of complicated to say in language, but let me show you a picture. So if we just looked at, let's just say we pretended we just looked at the Ativan guys, these guys, okay? So if we just looked at the Ativan data, right, and we left out the Xanax data, what we would do is run another one-way ANOVA, but simply with this data, right, just with the Ativan. That is a simple effect. Another simple effect is if we just looked at Xanax guys, right? So everybody in the study had been on Xanax, nobody from the Ativan. That would be a simple effect. And you, we could also go this way. We could simply look at just the CBT people for the both drugs, right? That would be a little t-test. Or just the biofeedback. Again, that would be something like a t-test and a DBT. That too would be a t-test. So there's actually five different simple effects that you can go in through here. So let's go back to SPSS and I'll show you how we're going to do this. Simple effects time. Okay, basically we're going to do the same thing we just finished. We're going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. And that all stays the same. We're going to go to Estimated Means. Click on that. And we're going to stick in the therapy type and the medication type. And the interaction type. We're going to stick those in there. We're going to compare main effects. And click continue. And, and we're not going to click OK. We're going to click the paste button. And that gives us our syntax table. So this is where we want to make a, a real quick change. Hold on one second. So we're going to go to this E means, right? Estimated means for the interaction type. Right past that last parentheses, we're going to type the word compare. And then in parentheses, we're going to type in the second medication variable. Close parentheses. Now, what this output should give us is it's going to compare the medication separately for the CBT group, the biofeedback group, and the DBT group. So let me say that again. This should give us three simple comparisons. I'm sorry, um, simple effects divided over the different therapy types. So let's just take a look, see what happens. We're going to go ahead and click this guy. And there's our output. So what we're looking for are these boxes down here. Here's the pairwise comparisons. That's not what we're actually looking for. We're looking for, where is it right here? Uh, pairwise comparison, this one. This is, these right here are the univariate tests. These are your, your um, simple effects. For the CBT group, right, there was a significant difference between the Xanax and the Antivan. And for the biofeedback, there was a significant difference between the two drugs, but there was not for DBT. So that's how you do simple effects in SPSS. I hope this helps. MGZ, out.